Ladies and gentlemen, this is Joe's Classic Video Games back with another arcade game video for you today. This is a repair video. We figured we'd document a little bit. We've got this Asteroids here that we've uh, had for years and it was in pretty rough shape. Side art was, had all been peeled off. Uh, the control panel was all banged up. So we're slowly piecing it back together. It didn't even have a harness in it whenever we got it. Didn't have the monitor, didn't have the board. It was just an empty cabinet. So. We're getting it looking pretty good. We don't have side art for it yet or anything, but we're up to the point where we're trying to get it to work. So we've already rebuilt the monitor and we've done a lot of the cosmetic stuff, as you can see. And it's starting to look pretty good. We've still got to put the, uh, the cardboard uh, surround around the monitor and everything. But we're working on the board and we we're just uh, got to the point where we're troubleshooting and we thought, hey, why don't we uh, film it so people can see a little bit about this. So what we've done is we've uh, tested the power supply, we rebuilt it, everything's working good on it. The board's getting the correct power, but it won't work. So basically whenever it comes up, it's coming up and just resetting over and over again. The way you can tell if an Asteroids is uh, not working, basically a vector monitor, it won't show an image if it's not working usually. So. Uh, I think this is the only LED that's working right now, but the LEDs will flash really bright, really fast, so it's doing this, which means that the watchdog is just constantly resetting it. So the next step on something like that is to put it in test mode. So this one, since we've been uh, putting the harness back in and everything, our test mode, this switch is supposed to mount up here on the side. Um, I'll take it back out of test so you can see what I'm talking about with the reset. The dreaded blinking LED of death. You may be able to hear it if you listen really carefully. Hear it? So basically, it's stuck in, in a reset. The reason I'm not doing it through the front is because I've got a, uh, that interlock switch will turn the power on. All right, so if you put it in test, switch, uh, test mode, watch what it does. All right, so did you hear the beeping? It is telling you what's wrong with it because it knows it can't show anything on the screen right now. So basically it's testing the RAM and telling you where the problem is, right? So you gotta listen carefully to the beeps. Now it has, it has two types of beeps. It does a high beep and a low beep. The reason the, the uh, sound sounds so anemic is because the speaker is all messed up. So we put, a, we put a test speaker in it that's just a little tiny one. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hit the reset button on the PCB and then listen again. You're listening for high beeps and low beeps and you want to count them. All right, so we got four high beeps and then two low beeps. Did you catch that? So if you look in the manual, very simple, self-test procedure. So, uh, RAM failure is indicated by a sequence of from one to six tones. A low frequency is turn, a tone is heard for each good RAM chip. A much lower frequency is heard for a failing RAM chip. So what did we get? We got four high tones and then two low ones, right? The sequence stops with the last failing RAM chip. To restart the sequence, press the reset push button on the game PCB or set the self test, test switch to off, then again to the one position. Identify the bad RAM chip with tables below, blah, 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 blah. All right, so an example, three tones, then a tone of much lower frequency indicates failure of RAM chip P4 because the fourth one would be low. I'm R4, so the fourth one would be low. Now, if you're doing this, you have to make sure that these RAM numbers line up with the numbers that are on your board, the RAM locations on your board. There's two different locations. Uh, there's an early board and a later board. So if you've, you've got to get the right manual for your board. But this is the right manual for our board. So we got four good ones, right? So that means that it tested these first four and said they were fine. And then the fifth one was low and the sixth one was low. That kind of gives you your first hint. Whenever it does stuff like that, it's, not, it's supposed to do tell you a bad one and then stop. But it didn't. It told us a bad one and then told us another bad one. Well, that's kind of weird, right? So it told us that 5, N4, and 6, P4 were bad, right? So next, what I did was, look at this. So on the board, uh, 
This is row N. This is column four. And this is row P, column P, or vice versa. So it's these two chips that already had uh, sockets on them. Well, isn't that peculiar? Why would those already have sockets on them? Somebody's already replaced those two chips at one time, right? So just for giggles, I swapped them out with two new ones, ran the test again, it did the same exact thing. I took the two chips out, ran the test again, it did the same exact thing. I put two other new ones in, ran the test again, same exact thing. So no matter what I do, it keeps failing these two RAM chips, although these two RAM chips are fine, right? So usually that would, that would work. So basically everything I've been showing you in this video so far didn't work on this one, right? But it did give us a little clue, right? So back over here to our schematics. So we did the self-test. Now I pulled up the schematics and I found the area which is the vector generator RAM area, right? This is the area that's it's testing in the test mode, right? So here's our four RAM chips. Now, if you'll remember, P4 and N4 failed, right? R4 and M4 passed. So what you can do is you can look and see what's common, right? So look at all these address lines. All of these connect to all four chips. So if there was a problem with one of those, since it tested R4 and M4 first and said that it passed, remember it gave us a high beep for that? Since it tested those first and said that they passed, you know the address lines are probably fine because they're running to all four chips. Now it could be a problem where the address lines aren't connected well to the two that are in sockets, but I looked and the sockets are a real clean install. Whoever did it, it looks like they did a good job, right? And uh, it's, it's not that two of them are connected together or anything because, again, that would mess up all four chips since they're all connected uh, in parallel. All right, so let's keep looking. We've got the same thing down here. Now look how they've done this. These data lines here, it's DDMA 7, 6, 5, and 4 connect to 11, 12, 13, and 14 on these two chips. And DDMA 3, 2, 1, and 0 connected to 11, 12, 13, 14 on these two chips. So see how those numbers are different? So that's 0, 1, 2, and 3 go to these two. 4, 5, 6, and 7 go to these two. But that, that again is not our problem because we've got this chip acting up and this chip, chip acting up. Right? So if it was these four, it would be both of these chips acting up. If it was something with those, right? So since this chip's passing, we know these lines must be fine. And since since this chip's passing, we know, or uh, this chip's passing, we know these lines must be fine. All right, so scroll down some more. All right, so now down here at the bottom, you've got the select circuitry, right? So basically the way the, the I'm not an expert on this, folks, but you know, I know enough to be dangerous, but the, the way basically the chip is selected is by signals coming through this chip and connected to pin 8 on this chip and this chip. Well, there's our two good ones, right? Those two are fine. So this chip here must be fine, M5, right? And you can see there's also two signals running through M5 connecting to these two chips. Well, there we go. So here's the one thing that's different about these two chips than the other two. It's the cable select line, right? So M5 if I can get it to focus, M5 is working fine for these two chips, right? You can assume, although sometimes you would be wrong, that M5 is probably working fine for the other two chips as well, right? But we'll test it just to make sure. And then we've got what drives this chip. Well, it's the same signal from up here, this VRAM signal, right? That same exact signal is tied together to both uh, parts of that chip. So you know that's probably fine because it's working for those two chips. And then you have this uh, AM10 running in that's connected to this chip, and it must be working. But it's also connected to this chip by running through L5, which is a 74LS04. So the signal comes in on pin 3 and goes out on pin 4. Right? So what I did was I wrote all that down. Now, if you've got a copy of the schematic, you can just lay it down on the floor. But So I wrote that down. So I'm going to check pin 8 on N4 and P4, which is our chip select pin, right? I'm going to check that. And then I'm going to check L5, pin 3 and 4, right, to see if that signal's going through. And then I'm going to check M5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. 
and just see what all those are doing, right? So uh, I'll set it up and we'll, uh, we'll check it out with the Logic Probe. Be right back. All right, folks, so we are back. So I have taken a Logic Probe, which is about a 10 or $15 tool, very cheap, right? And I connected it to the ground and to the five volts, right? And now we're gonna turn on the game. Now, when you first turn it on, see how the sound sounds different? It's because it, I, you, I didn't hear the first couple beeps because we had just turned it on. So to get the proper thing, you need to reset it once. All right, so it's still giving us the same problem. So sometimes you'll run into a problem where the program's not really running right now because it just failed the RAM test. So that's why it's not showing anything on the screen. That's another thing. If you don't get anything on the screen, that means it, it never passed the ROM and the RAM test. So, or the RAM test, I'm sorry. So what we're gonna do is we're going to check what we checked out. So pin eight on N4 and P4. I don't know how well you can see that. Yeah, see it's high basically. Now, like I said, I don't know if anything will be pulsing right now. Yeah, basically the board's crashed because it, you know, it's found an error. But uh, anyway, oh, wait a minute. Let me check on these to make sure. Yeah, but anyway, this will still work. So basically on pin 8, we do have some sort of signal. It's high, right? Now let's go to uh, M5 that we were looking at, which is this one. So there's pin one, high. Pin two, look at that, no signal at all. Pin three, high. Pin four, high. Five, high. Six, high. So pin two is completely dead. It's not doing anything. And then we're going to go to L5, uh, which is this one, which looks a little rusty, to be honest. And we'll check pin three, which is high. And pin four, we're getting no signal at all. So, hmm, let's go check that out. Okay, so on M5, we were getting no signal at pin two. And at L5, we were getting no signal at pin four, but we had a signal at pin three. So the signal's coming in to three, and we were getting a signal on M5 pin five. So we're getting a signal there and there, but it's not coming out of L5. It never makes it over to pin 2. Folks, I believe we have found our problem. So the next thing is we're going to swap that chip. So I'm going to swap L5, put a new one in, and then we'll see what happens after that. Be right back. So all right, folks, here is our offending chip. Let's see if you can read it. Might not focus that close. It's a 74LS04. Anyway, it looks kind of bad. It's got rust on the legs. There we go. There's just some focus. Got the rust on the legs, which sometimes that's fine, but apparently not in this instance. So I swapped it in, put a new socket. If we can get some focus doesn't want to cooperate with the focus today. All right, so let's test it out. Listen for the beeps. Nothing, right? So, uh-oh. It's trying. All right, so that's kind of what you're supposed to get. Okay, so the number in the middle, I'm not sure what that is, I have to look in the manual. The 11111111111, I believe, means that all of the dip switches are on. You see the little gradient in the middle there showing you the light, brightness, and darkness. Now, look what this left side's doing. It's hopping around all over the place. I don't know if that's the monitor. See? I don't know if that's the monitor, because it could be the monitor deflection board, or it could be the game board. But we got bigger fish to fry. Look up here at the top. There's a 201, 301. 
So that is an that is an error code that it's given us that's in the manual. So I'm going to reset it and see if it says the same thing. Hmm. Now we've just got a 301. Let me try it again. Now we don't have anything. Hmm, that's interesting. Let's try it again. When you're getting intermittent problems like that, you might want to check your power supply. I already checked mine earlier. So now we're getting a 201 again. So it looks like we're getting a two and a three and sometimes a nothing. So let's see what it says in the manual for that. All right. ROM. Prom failure is indicated by two lines of number in the two lines of numbers in the upper left hand corner of the display. The number on the first line indicates the failing ROM prom chips. So that's the two or the three. Identify the bad ROM or prom with table below. The number on the second line uh, indicates the failing data bit of the failing ROM or prom. Identify the bad bit with the second table below. That, kind of, that part you don't really need because if the chit's bad, we're going to replace it. So we were getting a 2 or a 3, right? Both of those point to F1. Hmm. F1. Do we have a chip in F1? Let's go look. Yep. All right, so this is row 1. There's F1. So it's telling me that that chip's bad, or it's at least acting up. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to pull that out and uh, check it in the ROM burner and see if it seems like it's right. And if it isn't, I'll burn another one. Uh, sometimes you can get away with just cleaning it too, but uh, I'll, I'll check it out in the ROM burner. Let's see what it says. All right, folks, we're in the back room with my trusty pocket programmer and this old laptop that we keep all of our old ROMs on. And so basically, if we put that chip in and then try to verify it, it is a... It is supposed to be chip 035145, uh, revision 1, so dot 01. That's what it says on the tag on it, right? Now if I try to verify that, it's not even close. So I don't know what that is. I don't know if the chip is just... If you look, it's a very strange. Somebody who really knows this stuff could probably tell me what it, what's wrong with it. But if you look, it thinks it's one number, and then it catches it's the it's the next value. So at spot 575, it thought it was going to get 65, but it got 64. And then at 571, it thought it was going to get C9, but it got C8. So it's one off all the way down every single location. Well, I guess not every single location, but a lot of the locations. So something's not quite right. Now, if I put in the first chip, which is the one that runs like the program and stuff, and then try to verify it, 035143, revision 1, verifies fine. So the first chip is fine. Now, if I put the second chip in, which is the middle one, a lot of times I'll try to verify it to the wrong thing just to make sure that it'll fail. Yep, see it's failing, so it's... Everything's working right, and so then if we check uh, three five one four four, it's working. So two, the the first two chips are fine, but this last one that it kept giving me the failure for, and then you know the one time it said it was all right. Um, fails every time, and it's one off. So. I can only conclude that that chip's bad, folks. So I'm going to burn another one, and we'll see what happens. All right, folks, so we swapped in that chip. I also put labels on them, and I checked the other one. That's the vector kind of chip. chip. It does has more to do with, like, the graphics and stuff. Um, and we are back. Where, so basically, it's not giving me that error anymore. And we've got this same problem. Now, these are kind of interesting. So the left side keeps tripping. You see we've got tons of things tripping now, but the left side basically is tripping. The right side not isn't really doing it at all. It's mainly the left side. That's the x-axis, so it's folding back over on itself sometimes. And then also, I'm not sure how big of a deal it is, but that right line is missing. 
So that may just be because it's adjusted too far that way or something. It's not centered. Um, so I'm going to have to try to figure that out. But basically we've got something, since that right line is missing, it's kind of making me think that it's something on the board. Um, but it's going to be something in the X area. This type of stuff, much harder to figure out because it's in the, it's, it's in the vector um, generation generator side of it. A lot harder to find what's going on, but we'll mess with it. Um, and uh, let's put it in test, like take it out of test and see what happens. All right, now first thing, if you listen, hear that kind of buzzing? It's called vector chatter. It means the monitor is attempting to play the game, it's drawing the lines and things. But you can hear it go off, come back on. So basically, it's playing, it's it's working, but it's uh, resetting every once in a while because it uh, whatever it is that's making that jitter on the left side is resetting the game. So let's see if it'll play. Again, the sound is horrible because it has the wrong speaker. But it is working. We're playing. See it reset on us. So basically whatever it is that's screwing up the uh, thing is resetting the game, which again points to it's the board. If it was the uh, monitor messing up, it wouldn't reset the, the game. It would just uh, take the picture off and come back, but you'd be in the same spot. So I think we just figured out that there's something going on on the board still. So we will kind of try to track that down a little bit and uh, continue the video. All right, folks, so the saga continues. So you saw that it was uh, in the X area, right? So I did a little searching online, and what I was focusing in on was that right line being missing, right? So I found a website that's got an entire uh, a ton of troubleshooting that they've done on asteroids, and they were saying that one time whenever they had that happen, they had a problem with this um, J8 chip here which is a 7497, which is a rate multiplier, right? And this gentleman said that his, uh, this DVX0 line was messed up. Sorry about the moray pattern. I don't have like a paper copy of this. I just have it on the computer. So his DVX0 line was messed up. So I checked, and guess what? My DVX0 and DVX1 did seem kind of weird. They were pulsing weird. So basically, whenever you have these, these, pro these problems with uh, any kind of the graphics, like the vector output, basically you have to go into the vector state, they call it, side of the machine. And it's, it's kind of like hit and miss. You can make kind of educated guesses to look in a certain area. And then there are certain people I've seen that are really good at, oh, that must be one of the counters, blah, blah, blah. Uh, but you kind of just have to go into it. Now, we kind of knew it was in the X section. So I, I looked in all of the X stuff, so X and Y position counter. And then I found that one thing uh, where the guy was mentioning uh, that, uh, you know, this 7497 uh, did something similar to him, made that right uh, line disappear. Uh, so I googled asteroid 7497 and then was reading a bunch of other people talking about uh, that these things fell a lot and that whenever they do fail sometimes it would shift the screen slightly. Now I don't know if you remember, maybe you could rewind, the screen wasn't perfectly centered. I may be wrong about that, but hey I got it on videotape, you could look uh, about, rewind about four minutes and see what it was. <laughs> I'm pretty sure that the screen was shifted to the right a little bit. Um, and, uh, you know, we had that weird thing where it was kind of moving, you know, and resetting over and over again. So I just I looked around all on, on a lot of this area. Um, all of the other signals had nice, strong pulses. Those two had a real weak pulse. Like it was just kind of lethargic. Now, anybody who knows how to fix these things is probably laughing at me describing it that way. But if you have an oscilloscope you can see exactly what's going on. An oscilloscope shows you like a, you know, an, an actual image of the signal that's going through. I don't have an oscilloscope. I've got an old one, but um, I, I don't really know how to use them that well. I haven't gotten that far into it yet. Um, so I always just use a logic probe. Um, and the, the signals on that, uh, that DVX uh, 
DVXO and DVX1 were weak. They just didn't, they weren't giving me a good pulse. Now on my counters, I had a couple things that were acting a little weird, but these counters, these LS191s, give you all kinds of problems. But they all seemed like they were getting, I, like the, the only problem I was getting was on this one, on C9, pin 6 and pin 7 uh, were low, and then they would kind of pulse a little bit and then go back to low. And then after a while, it would pulse a little bit, and it was kind of anemic. You know, it just didn't seem quite right. But then I looked at the schematics, and if you look, it's at the top of the... So you've got uh, UNM, DACX, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, and then this is 12. So it's at the top of the addresses, 11 and 12. In most games, those top addresses like that don't get used all the time. So I guess it was accessing something that it would just do every once in a while. Again, people that know what they're talking about would know exactly what's going on, but that's just something that I was noticing. Now, if I would have had, like, number 6 acting up or number 8 acting up or number 3 acting up, well, that's right in the middle of the addresses. You know those are probably supposed to be pulsing pretty steady the whole time. These last two just weren't pulsing all that great. So I kind of thought, well, uh, it's probably supposed to be doing that because they're at the top of the of the uh, ladder there. But this O and this 1 were giving me, just looked weird. I had found another guy saying that the right line being missing was because of this chip and this line right here. So I thought, well, hell, let's swap it, right? So I swapped it. And this is what our test menu looks like now. So nice and solid. Now, it's centered too, if you look. So here's the uh, the center. And it's nice and centered. Um, so uh, we'll try to put it into gameplay and see if it works. Haven't tried that yet. So it's working. Now is it going to reset? Let's try it. Uh... So you can see the thrust is gone. The thrust sound is not there like it should be. Uh, so we've got some sound issues we need to mess with. Our shooting sound isn't there. The asteroid explosion sounds there. The ship explosion sound isn't there. The ship, the UFO sound isn't there. Right? Not bad for one hand. Oh, it reset again. So we still got something going on. These are the best problems, folks. But, so, you know, what that tells us is the little graphic problem we were having, we fixed it. And some of the, it's still not stretched wide enough, it's still an adjustment. But the little graphic problem we were having, we fixed it, but we still have something making it reset. So we're going to have to look through for that. Um, so uh, th those are always really fun, because who the hell knows, right? It could be <laughs> it could be anything causing it to do that. Sometimes you'll, you'll get uh, where you can, you can see something happening on the screen, and every time that happens it does it, which will kind of give you a clue. Um, But who knows? So I'm, what I'm going to do is I'm going to keep working through it. I'm just I'm going to start doing the sound um, problems next. And then uh, ultimately we may get where we've got a board that's working pretty good but resets all the time. So, But if we do, we do. But I'm going to keep working through it and maybe we'll, uh, we'll start seeing something that is specific about the reset where we can help track it down. But uh, we'll do the sound thing next. 
All right, folks, back to the schematics. There is an LS259 latch at M10 that does the life uh, sound, which I guess is when you get a free man. Uh, the ship fire, which is missing. The ship thrust, which is missing. The saucer fire, which is missing. And the saucer sound, which is when the UFO comes out, which is missing. So it could be this, uh, it looks like this audio line with the line over it. it maybe enables all that. I don't know. Um, but these LS259s I've seen go bad a lot, so I'm just going to swap the chip and see what happens. So that's next. All right, folks, we're still in a situation where it's resetting, but I did replace that 74 LS259. See how it's resetting. And uh, we got the sound back, but it's still off. So listen to the, th the thrust, which that could just be the speaker, you know. So we got the wrong sound for the fire. The ship is exploding, so that's good. And let me see if I can get the UFO to pop up. folks oh, it reset for me that's good I want you to hear the uh, saucer so you can see what's going on with it oh, come on it doesn't want to cooperate folks basically the, the, the saucer sound is way off too So the, I think it's a little too high-pitched, you know. So the first thing I'm going to do is, is put a much better speaker in it and uh, so that we can tell if the thrust sounds all right or not, and then we'll, we'll work on it some more. So uh, I'll be back uh, once we get that kind of sorted out. Okay, so we replaced the uh, speaker and got it uh, where it sounded like it's supposed to, but the only, and so all of the sounds were correct. I thought the UFO was off, but it was actually right once we put a decent speaker in it. Um, the only one that wasn't right was the ship fire. It made like a, uh, the rumble, oh, the, the thrust was fine too. The ship fire just made like a beep sound. And so uh, it was really loud too, so it wasn't like it was muffled or anything. And sometimes you'll get like a little click, click, click where you don't hardly hear a sound. And that's usually this op amp. This is the uh, ship fire enable. So basically we must have been getting that because when you hit the fire button, it was doing something. And then this is where the ship fire sound comes out. So someone had replaced this 4016 chip already, so we figured that probably wasn't it. And uh, this timer chip looked real bad, so I replaced it, but that didn't fix it. Um, both of these transistors tested fine. And so, uh, and I, also I replaced these three caps, this one, uh, this one, and this one. And that didn't fix it. So. It kind of came down to just that. So basically what was happening was the ship fire enable sound uh, signal was going and it was turning on this timer and uh, coming out here. But you weren't getting this 4016 thing which kind of makes the sound of it. Um, that's technical, folks. You weren't getting this part because the signal wasn't traveling through this N9 chip. So when I replaced N9, it fixed it. Now, another funny thing that happened we haven't had it reset in a while, so I don't know why. Here's the board. Um, you can see this is where we did the work on the um, ship fire sound. We've still got an issue where the screen's not quite wide enough, which I'm one. That's I think that's something on the monitor there. Um, but you can hear how our sounds sound. Is there a thrust? Rattling the cages like it should. Chip fire. So we got all that right. 
explosion sound. So everything's working good now. It's just uh, it hasn't reset in a while, but I didn't fix anything that I think would make it reset. So we're going to watch it a little bit and uh, see if we can figure out why it's doing that. But uh, you can't fix what ain't broke, right? So if you like this kind of video, let us know below. Just leave us some comments. Tell us uh, what you think. If you learned anything, if you saw me make a big mistake, <laughs> you got to hear the uh, ship, the UFO fire sound at least. Um, and let me know what you think. Just leave us, uh, leave us your opinion down below, and uh, make sure and subscribe to us. We do videos like this all the time. Uh, we've got a whole room here full of games that we're working on at all times. Uh, but uh, we'll see you on the next video.